Okay, so we are back. Uh, in the last episode, we added uh, some lenses for eye lights. We made the skin texture a little bit better. A little bit, we did the very basic minimum Fresnel dielectric style reflections with additive, uh, made them a little bit glossy. They're still a little bit bright in my opinion. She's pretty shiny. And the clothing looks pretty good with just a diffuse map and just a bump map, no reflection. Jeans really aren't that reflective. Um, and those maps are pretty low quality. Not quality, they're great quality. They're just low resolution. They're like 1K. These days, you know, for photo real, you know, we, we really want like UDIM 4K maps for everything, if not eight for the face, um, because you can get there. Um, the things that we would do moving forward, I'm not going to do them today because uh, we're going to do hair, is that we have this very even, um, I just want to talk about stuff that you can guys can go research on your own, but is a bit beyond the scope of this today, is that right now we have a very like, um, still a plasticky kind of reflection and you could try to use the spec maps if you think that those are going to work for you. Uh, and her skin is also very smoothed out. Um, so we could add a bump map on top of this, and that would start to add little things like the skin pores. And you can go even further on top of that. And with the hair system, we're actually going to do very basic hair. If we could go into the full reel, you can give her hair that's long here, you know, but then you can give her hair on her face and hair that's on her ears and really subtle hairs. And you start layering all these little things on top of each other over, you keep adding more detail and more detail and more detail. When you pull back and render, it's like, starts to look real. Uh, the eyes on this one are not that great either. They're very glossed over. Um, but those are things that you can go look into on your own if you want to continue down the road to the un uncanny valley. Um, but this is going to get you pretty close um, for now. Good enough, I think, for cine design so that the eye lights show up, so that the reflections in the skin look good. Um, but you can go as far as you would like. I'm going to just beat those down for now. Eye reflections are seeming bright. So let's do hair. Now you have to excuse me. Uh, I'm not the best at hair. I've only just started to do it. I think you guys might've remembered like when I started posting hair stuff on Facebook, I turned off the light so I can see. Um, it's new to me. Okay. So I need to still work on this. I'm not the best. So we're going to select the body and what we're going to start by doing. I'm hitting enter to get to um, uh, polygon mode. I'm going to paint select her scalp where I want the hair to go. And they've kind of pretty much drawn it here. So let's start painting this out. Boom, 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 boom. Do, 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 do. I'm not going to speed it up because I'm lazy. Oh, I lost sight of my person. Hitting S. Um, so let's paint this out. So what we're essentially doing now, and it's a little trial and error to get this right. You need to pick the part where her... Um, where you want to add hair to. It's pretty straightforward actually. And if you're hardcore, you know, people tell me it's like, if you're going to do it the right way, you actually should select multiple parts and be like, okay, this is her front hair. This is her back hair and you do them separately, but I'm going to do it all at once just to show you the workflow. And then you can start to get it like, depending on like, say she did one of those haircuts where it's like shaved on the side and then long on the top. I'm actually pondering, <gasps> oh no, pondering doing a haircut like that for myself. Um, then you would you would have short hair on the side. You would just, just select the side and do hair for that, and then just select the top and do hair for that. You can do that. Once you know this workflow that I'm gonna show you, you can 100% go do that if you want to. Um, and I really wanna do spend like a good like couple hours more building out my main character that I use for most of my stuff, but for now, this is fine. So there, there's her scalp. Um, do I want... It's, it's questionable if you need the side. I'm gonna actually deselect those. I'm holding control to get rid of those. Yeah, that's pretty good. This feel, this needs like, this seems like this wants to be here. Oh, stair steps. Okay, so let me see if I can remember how to do this. Um, it's under simulation or, or something like that. Sorry, again, not pro at this at all. Um, plugins. <sighs> Simulate, okay, hair objects. Okay, so you need to have, I think, studio to be able to do this. So sorry guys if you don't have studio, but you should get the studio. Oh, we made a hair object, there's so much hair. Um, let's unselect, so let's, let's see what we got going on here. So we're done, we're done, it's beautiful. We added a beautiful hair object, let's save. And let's see what this render's like. <laughs> Uh, so you definitely want to be rocking the QMC settings like I was saying before. Um, and you'll see that with this hair object in there, how much longer this takes to calculate. 
Um, but I just want to give you a quick rant. It's <laughs> like terrible of um, what this is going to look like. So right now we're in a phase of the renderer called quick preview. And it does, it, this phase takes longer and longer as you add more objects to the scene. And hair, guess what? Hair is basically every single piece of hair is an object. So it's, it's a little bit expensive as far as rendering. So if you wanted to go back to that low poly style of um, uh, using fuse hair, um, or if you know how to sculpt hair, you know, from a polygon mesh, I could show you how to sculpt hair in Cinema 4D. It's really not hard. You just kind of make a blob and just sculpt it into hair and you add like scratches down it to make it seem like it's, um, to make it seem like it's hair and not just a blob of clay on your head. It's actually not hard at all. This is like the, um, photo real accurate way to do hair. This is how you do hair for big movies like Tangled or, you know, any CG hair. This is, um, that's not for a game. This is the way you do it. Um, this is the exact same style of system. Theirs is going to be a little bit more advanced. They're going to have really good people at it, but this is the fundamentals of it. And if you were in Maya, Maya hair is so hard. Um, it's really hard. Cinema 4D is really straightforward, uh, despite the long render times. Okay, so I feel like my key light's a little bit low, huh? Did I? Did I? I guess I. I guess I did that. Um, so the, she has a huge afro, but I made it too dark. So let's just bump this up real quick back up to like 70 and just pop another one real quick. Let's just look at it from, yeah. So you can see it's like this huge Afro um, hair going straight out in craziness, right? So I'm not gonna sit sit through this render again, um, but that's how long these renders take. Takes longer. Takes longer for quality, okay? I told you. I told you, um, oh no. Um, so let's, let's go make this hair not, not look crazy. But if you look, if you look in here, you'll see that the hair is only stuck to where we selected. So that's so it, damn it. Um, that's that's so intuitive. Um, that's a nice, quick, easy thing. And so where is this thing, right? Where is this? It's this, it's this hair object. Um, that's what got generated. And uh, can I turn it off? Yeah, I can ungenerate it to generate object. And it also generated this material over here and you control uh, this hair between the material here and the settings of the actual hair itself. So it's a lot to do. So let me try to make this as smart, as good as I can uh, easily. So I'm not going to get into everything. You can take out, you can brush the hair, you know, which we might do a little bit of. You can cut it. You can do all sorts of stuff and I'll try to demo it. I'm not the best at this. I'm not, this is going to be kind of like a, a uh, 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 me hacking my way through it again. I've only done this a couple times. So if you go to, so I selected the hair object. You go to guides. Guides are these blue things, okay? Um, and they, you, as you control those, that tells the hair where to go. So what you can do is change the count. So I could go to like 10. And now there's 10 hairs. Uh, I could go 50. I could go to 100. Uh, and the more you have, the longer it's going to take, but the more control you'll have over the hair system together. Segments is how many, um, say there's just one. Does this gonna make sense? Yeah. So if I do this to like 12, you can't see them. Can I change this to polygon vertex? What's it on right now? Polygon vertex, polygon area, polygon, polygon, whatever, polygon vertex. Basically this is divided up by a bunch of segments. We're gonna say it's like eight for now. Um, Growth, not gonna mess with this stuff. Let's not mess with any of this stuff. Cool. So those are the guides. Um, length, that's the big one. So let's put this back to 500. So it's, it's she's got large hair. If I make it 10, she's got shorter hair. That's how we do it, 10 centimeters. Just get used to working in centimeters, guys. Uh, 15, 20, if you want long hair, you get long hair. And this is why you'd wanna break it up. If like, you know, you know it's gonna be short on the side, put short hair on the side, make an object of just short hair. If you want long hair on the top, Make an object that's just long hair. I'm going to make it all the same, but I'm going to make it 10. Oh, nope, not that. 500, um, we're going to make it 10. Oh, why is her hair crazy? What happened? What happened to you? Why is it like that? Oh no, what did I do? Why is your hair all clumped up crazy? Like, if I change this, does this help? No, I broke this or something. Oh man. So get this, get this. If you screw up the hair, which you will, I'm gonna delete it. I'm also gonna delete the hair texture and look how easy this is to get it back. Double click this little triangle, which is my selection of the hair. Go to simulate, go to hair object, new hair object. New hair object comes in, new material. All I've done so far is screw this up, is hit 10 and we're back. Don't be afraid to just delete it. You know, just delete it and start again. 
I might have to delete it more times than is kind of kind of embarrassing here. So the hair count. This is just a preview of the hair. Of course, you're not going to have blue guide hairs with little dots at the end. You're going to it's going to it's going to use those guides and it's going to render and create hair based on those guides. How much hair it creates is based on this number. So let's see what 5000 kind of looks like. I know this render might blow. I need a faster computer. We're getting to that point in time. This feels dark. Let's just crank this because this is dark hair right now. Let's just crank the light up a little bit brighter for this scene. Uh, let's render. Um, that seems a little bit better already. So you can see that it added like a ton of like actual geometry hairs. Damn, this is still dark. What's going on here, man? I guess I just got to go for it. Gotta go for it. Let's just crank this thing. Maybe it's because I'm not looking at the actual lighting. Um, oh, I am a smart person. This light is off. Ha ha. Ha ha. Oh, yeah. You guys should be learning from this guy who's lighting people and saying it's dark because the light is off. That's like that's like making a whole like photography tutorial and then the uh, lens cap being on the hard time. So it's like, I know the scene's dark, but we're going to get there. That's, that's literally what just happened here. So... Let this render up now that the light's actually on. Man, I didn't have the light. <laughs> oh, goodness. So she's got a crazy looking afro still, right? So we're gonna get we're gonna get into the part where we make this hair look better. Unless no offense actually if you haven't if this is what your hair looks like. This is what my son's hair looks like, except curlier. Um, but I mean it's not like your typical haircut, right? So you'll see this, it looks a little bit there's a lot of things wrong with it, but it's starting to look like hair a little bit. And I think what I'm going to add is a quick um, backlight, a hard backlight. Should I do a soft backlight? I should do a soft backlight, shouldn't I? Let's do a 1K open face with no stand. Let's do a Shimura. Ba. Ba ba boom. Ba ba boom. Where is it? There it is. Okay. Uh, so. I know my Shimera system is kind of silly because you have to uh, only turn on the Shimera itself. It's kind of weird, right? Uh, but that's how it works for now. Uh, I am working on getting a programming fix for that, though, so that you don't have to do that. So now we got a big old backlight. It's like in the shot kind of backlight, but that's OK, because whatever. 40,000 seems a tiny bit bright, maybe. Let's see if this is going to render out with a little bit of backlight. Yeah, so now you can see that the hair is being rim lit. Is it like way too bright? It might be, but whatever. Okay, so let's keep chugging along here. Like I said, hair takes a long time to render. Actually, what we could do is we could simplify the body render too, but it's really the hair that's chugging this system down. But let's keep going with the hair. So let's click the hair object that we made. I'm gonna save again as an iterative, incremental, that's what they call it. So we, that's the hair count. Let's look at this stuff. Don't mess with that stuff. I mean, go mess with it on your own if you want, that's fine. Editor. Oh, guidelines. So we can change it to hair. So you can kind of see the hair, hair polygons, um, which will be important in a little bit. Guidelines and guide polygons. Interesting. So there's a bunch of different ones. Hair lines, you know? So there's a bunch of different ways to view it. So that's what's going on in there. Generate. I don't know. Dynamics. Oh, dynamics is important. Forces. Yep. Okay. Cache. Partings, calling, I'm just, I'm just kind of going through these. Seed, yep, yep, fong, okay. So what we have to do now is we have to, oh, I have none, none, guidelines. What we have to do now is relax this hair. And I'm trying to remember how we do this. I think it's in here. Yeah, relax, okay. So what this is, is this, okay, I'm saving again, because this is where things start to get funny for me. I'm personally not that comfortable with this system, but this is how I, I was told that this works. If you hit relax, what's going to happen is it's going to use gravity. These strands of hair, it's going to call it, they're going to use gravity and they're going to fall down. And I'm actually going to change the segments up here to 12. And I don't really know anything other than that. So dynamics and dynamics. Um, let's hit relax. Ooh, so, okay. So essentially I'm hitting relax and it's playing 10 frames at a time. And so the hair fell down, right? But you'll see that it's clipping through her head. So I, I, I screwed up. So what we actually have to do is we have to go to body. We don't want, we don't want the hair to clip through her head. So we have to tell the body um, thing here 
to not let hair through it. And the way that you do that is you go to hair tags and you call, you put on a hair collider. It's that simple. I hope. <laughs> uh, let's hit play again. Oh, that's really slow. Um, let's go to here. Let's go to the zero frame. Yeah, okay, so it reset the simulation. Hit relax again. Yeah, so now it's slow. It's really slow, but it is not hitting, it's not clipping through her head, I don't believe. Right? So that's good. So we keep hitting relax until it just kind of like lands on her head. It's pretty cool. Um... I hit, I, actually, I think I kept hitting it. This will crash your computer if you have the settings too high for something that you can't handle. So that's pretty cool already. That's looking pretty good for the guides. You can kind of understand how this looks. It's in her face, so we're going to have to chop that away, and we can brush the hair, which we'll do in a second. I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm good at that process, but I, I will show you how to do it. Uh, let's do a, a quick render. Um, and look at this. So to review, we selected the polygons on an object that we wanted to add hair to. Then you just make a hair object and it automatically makes it just on those polygons. The hair comes out like like crazy huge. Uh, and then you need to uh, change the density, like how much hair there's there. And then you need to change, um, you hit, you need to add a collider to the object so that the hair doesn't go through the face of the, of the model. And then we hit relax a couple times under simulate because this is a simulation. And that's why I think, I think studio is the only version that has simulations. And now the hair has fallen down because of gravity and it's like touching her face. So like, that's like, if you're getting your haircut, which is exactly what we're going to do in a second is give her a haircut. Uh, you've just gotten your hair all wet and it's just perfectly straight down. There's a lot to cover here. So that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll just let it get to the past the quick preview part. I'm kind of bored right now. I think it's going to start doing like an actual render pretty soon, but you'll see the hair is shiny like hair should be, you know? We're going to change the shader. Shading of the hair is very important, as you can imagine. Shading of the body, very important. Shading of the hair, very important. Yeah, we're like uber clipping her with this backlight here. Um, but I'm bored, so let's stop that. Okay, so we've we've done we've gotten to a certain part here. Um, a good a good good portion of stuff has happened as far as getting us towards that Chimera. You too bright. You had two bright. Okay, so let us move along with the hair. So now it's down. What I believe I have to do this again. Uh, I need to go to. We want to not. We want to freeze the hair, is what it's called. So I need to find that. I'm sorry, I don't remember where it is. I'll find it. I'm looking for it. Set as dynamics. I don't know what that means, but someone told me you click set as dynamics, and now if I hit play. Ah, oh, it's still going. Um, hmm. Well, I hit set as dynamics, and that's supposedly not supposed to reset the hair to like Afro style uh, when you go to zero. And I think that's the case. So I think we're at zero and the hair stayed down. So good. Uh, there's, I feel like there's somewhere also in here that's like, it was like set, um, initial state or something like that like make this the where it starts I should probably turn on hair to hair I should probably turn on hair ooh. I should probably should have turned on hair to hair um so they don't the hair doesn't clip through each other but set of dynamics that's what they told me so yeah we'll start there so we're gonna save and I'm just like save happy here because I'm always concerned that this is just gonna blow up and die what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut the bangs off of her we're gonna cut hair. We're gonna do. We're gonna literally be barbers and cut hair. So what I would like to see is all the dots, though. I'm only seeing the end effector. Guidelines, guide polygons, guide hairlines. Is that what we want? I think it's guide hairlines. Maybe. Uh, let me just spend two seconds here. Sorry that I don't have this memorized. Um, I feel like. I need to be able to see vertex, edge, center, area. Which one is it? It's not UV. Okay, that's the root. That's not what I want to mess with. Uh, I need to be able to see the segments. Sorry for this boringness. Like I said, I'm not pro at this at all. Um, I'm about to give up in a second, so we'll just try to cut it and we'll see how this goes. 
Damn, man, I thought it was... I thought it was this. Preview, you know? Guidelines? Guide polygons? Guidelines. Guide hairlines. Eh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're going to go to simulate, and we're going to go to... Um, see this feather and fur? There's a bunch of stuff. Oh, here it is. Uh, we're going to go to points. See, now I see these in-between points. In between. <laughs> as soon as I give up, we find we find the actual way to do it. Um, so we're going to go to simulate. We need to turn on points so I can see that. Uh, hair edits, nope. Hair selection, nope. Hair tools, yes. Yes. So I'm bringing this bad boy out. And now you got to get your hair cutting skills on. Okay, the buttons don't scale. It's good. It's good design. Um, so what we're going to do now, I'm going to save again. I'm, I've probably saved like 10 times. I just know I'm going to break, I'm going to mess this up. Uh, and there probably is undo, but I don't know. Uh, we're going to do cut. And I'm going to attempt to cut your bangs off, lady. Let's try it. Go like this. Oh, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh, not bad. Not, not great. Not bad. So we're going to cut more bangs off. Oh God. Oh, Oh, I have so much more respect for people who actually cut hair now. Oh my goodness. Oh, terrible. Terrible. Oh, it's the ugliest haircut ever. But you get it. I, you get it. You can probably do a better job. Let's see if undo works. Does undo work? It, do, it does work. Okay, so we, we can always keep doing better jobs, right? Let's do, an, let's do a weird cut. Let's do like this. Like, uh, 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 uh. Oh, no, no. I cut the back hair. You don't want to cut the back hair. Let's do this again. Uh, so this is kind of fun, actually. Um, so you, you're cutting the hair, right? Uh, I, and no one has made a tutorial that I found and I, I looked around a bit. Maybe there is. You guys can link it if you find it. No one's made like an actually like comprehensive like just make a normal ass haircut kind of video. And this is what I'm trying to get to you guys is how to do this. Because it's kind of intimidating like when you start. But when you see the whole thing all together, it's really not too bad. So we cut her hair. Uh, and it's gone now. It's ugly haircut. Oh, God. <laughs> Terrible. Let me do one more attempt at this. Um... <laughs> I like that better. That seems more natural. Um, but do your best here. And you can imagine if you want it to be really short hair, then you just um, make short hair that's the shorter, and then you can brush it. So let's brush it now. So comb. Comb and brush. So you can imagine uh, you just start to brush. You go like this, and it moves the guides and the hair, and now you br you're brushing your hair. So if you, know, if you guys are too manly to brush hair like a doll, then you, know, you can have ugly hair on people. So I'm kind of brushing her hair out. This is not like best practices by any means. Like see how crazy that looks like. But you know, you, you do a better job than I'm doing, but this is how you fit. This is the mechanics of brushing hair in Cinema 4D. Uh, uh, do a better job than me, right? So we're brushing. And then there's combing and just, just go play with these tools and you can, you can get into the hair as much as you want to, you know? Uh, so that's brushing, right? Not bad. We cut her hair and we brushed it done and I didn't crash the system and I didn't get completely stuck though it took me a long time to find out where those guides were uh, how you get the little guide preview so let's save again Woo! Oh, I'm glad that that's over um next we're gonna look at the shader right so this is important and there's a lot here this is as deep as like making the skin look good the shader of the hair could take a long time to get to know all this stuff but um let's start with color turn off spec turn off thickness. oh don't turn off thickness specular so, um, color, really easy. Let's make her hair brighter. Getting the color of hair correct, not easy. That's something I still don't really know how to do um, very well yet. Uh, I, ticked, I make her hair black because <laughs> it's, it's like the clothing. You can't mess up black. It's a lot harder to mess up black than anything else. Um, so this is going to look not real. That's not what color hair really looks like. Maybe I'll just make it blonde. The whole thing blonde. It's a little green feeling. You know? So let's turn on... Let's turn back on the specular. If you go to specular, you can imagine that's what makes it shiny, so the reflections. Um, I don't know what strength and sharpness is. If you right-click this, you should be able to do show help. Oh, okay, there you go. So sharp strength. Increasing sharpness values from left to right. So that's... Oh, sharpness. Oh, okay, cool. So that's kind of like blurriness. That makes sense. So I want to do like 90. Interesting. Okay, cool. Cool, interesting. So let's turn this off, actually. Let's just do primary and do 100 at 50. This is going to take a long time to render. But uh, we changed the color of the hair, and we changed the sharpness, which I just learned what that means. Oh, her hair is ridiculous colored, and it's way too bright. 
Um, but that's cool. So you guys are going to have to have fun doing this part, um, going through the shaders. Are her eyes messed up? Um, you can give her ridiculous Goldie, Goldilocks blonde hair. Uh, I do a lot of black hair for my models because I'm lazy. Because um, there really is no black hair in the world. It's all dark brown. Uh, do some Googling on hair science and lighting for hair and hair shaders. Um, I do want to let this get to like a certain point. How much do I have left on my camera? I've got 14 minutes left to finish up this tutorial. Um, so that looks a little insane. Um, but I'll show you a couple last things before I go. Uh, even if I got you to j just this part, the rest is you fiddling around with, this, with the settings. I just want to give you a little bit of guidance and direction of what settings you want to mess with. So here comes our first actual progressive pass as it goes through. Looks terrible. Uh, the hair is too thick, first of all, and I didn't simulate it with hair collisions on. So they're kind of clipping through each other. So let's, let's, let's get through to the next bit here. So uh, I like the skin shader though. Uh, these are preview renders. Um, specular. Too hot. 75. Let's do that. Color. Color is a bit bright for my opinion. I don't think hair ever gets that bright. Right? Doesn't. Just doesn't. Um, so what we want to look at, specular, we looked at that, is thickness. So, um, the thickness is the thick. So, like, these things are like cones. They're, like, basically, like, cone objects. So, if you made the thickness a centimeter, you'd have these huge, like, dreadlock, big hair pieces. So, hair is actually really small. Like, pull out a hair, what's the thickness of a hair? I don't know. I think it's, like, 0 0.01 to, like, 0 0.05 or something like that. It's really small. And you can change the variation. So, I'm not going to. Um, length. Um, scale, frizz, if you change frizz, kink, clump, tighten, bend, curl, if you start to add these things, these guides, will, the hair will start to just like frizz on its own or start to get wavy. And you just got to go through all the settings, look at the help menu, Google it a little bit, twist, wave, straighten, all these things, you take, it takes the guides and it adds like, if you wanted to make it really fuzzy or like curly, you would do frizz and it would go pfft. It would like stick it up in the air, that sort of thing. I'm not going to do it. Um, but I changed the thickness. That's really important to get right. So 0.01 to 0.05 centimeters. I made the hair a little bit darker. And um, I think to kind of wrap this up for today, because uh, we could do this forever, forever. Uh, I, I'm, you should sim the hair with hair collisions on because I didn't do that. But let's, uh, let's see if we can get to like a better physical. Let's just let this render out for a bit. Turn this blurriness to four, this to two, um, globals all at low, and let's do a physical render. And again, this is kind of like an octane style render. And let's see where we got with our fuse character. Did I deliver on getting you closer to reality today with the fuse characters as a base? I believe I have. Um, so to recap from the last episode as we let this render out, we brought in our Fuse base. Now remember in Fuse, generate high quality textures, high resolution textures. This looks terrible, her hair. I need to add more hair. I need to add more hair. Um, then we brought them in. I showed you how to set up textures for her skin, especially with the reflections. You can see that in her now, she's a little bit shiny. I would turn the strength down. We added spheres for eye, for eye lights and reflections, which we kind of see here. Uh, I could keep tweaking that. She needs more hair, I keep seeing that. Um, still in preview, it's fine. Uh, and then we added shaders to the clothing um, and to everything else. We added the normal maps to everything, which adds more detail. Very important. Uh, and then I showed you how to make a hair object in Cinema 4D Studio R17. You're going to poly select where you want the hair to go. This looks terrible. Um, generate that hair object. Change the length of the hair. Then you're going to relax it. Set as dynamics. And then you're going to cut the hair with the scissor tool. And then you'll brush it with the brush tool. And then you're going to go to your shader. And you are going to change the thickness of the hair. And then you're going to change the color. Because this color looks terrible. And then you can add frizz and kink and that sort of thing. Um, you could brush the hair up into the air if you wanted and have it stick up. Like you can make like mohawks. And go wild with it. And this is real hair. And the render times are a little bit severe. So I actually want to do one thing before I end this. To me... Um, that should help you guys. 5,000 hairs, not enough hairs. 10,000 hairs, maybe still not enough hairs. 
15,000 hairs. That's probably a little bit better. The color of her hair is insane, insanity. Just like way crazy blonde. I don't know the theory behind making nice colored hair. Um, I'm sure someone out there will tell you more about that subject than I will. I'm gonna make it dark now because darker is a little bit, I think darker is easier to handle like that. Specular, maybe I will bring you back to 50. 50 with a sharp value and then 25 with a dull value. Let's see how that goes. A lot of stuff here. There's backlight color and like, which is going to simulate like, um, what's it called? Uh, simulate like uh, subsurface scattering. We didn't do subsurface for her. I could. It takes a long time. My computer's not the fastest computer in the world to kind of show you that stuff. What side should I look at? Let's look at the near side of the light. Okay. Just get real analytical on this. And I'm going to actually up this res to render us out. My favorite res. Let's do 2K by 1K. It's my favorite. I love that resolution. Text message. I'm just going to clear that. And let's bust out a render. Uh, and we're going to let this render out. We're going to rock out for the last of this tutorial. Letting this render up and see what we've made here. And I also want, kind of want to show you. Again, I have a screen record going. I hope. <laughs> um, show you just what real time this kind of looks like as far as um, a MacBook Pro with the NVIDIA, not that the video card really matters, NVIDIA um, GT750 mobile card, so not the not a Kessler card or Kepler card or whatever, um, and using physical. This is the physical renderer with the primary GI set to QMC, secondary set to irradiance, everything essentially low, samples a little bit higher for the shininess uh, to get this looking okay. And then this is gonna take forever. Uh, Maybe I'll let this render on my end, and then at the end of the video, I'll, I'll just show you what the final render kind of looks like as a as a as a progressive render. Maybe I'll do a, a nice beauty render. I should probably do a beauty render just to show what this is going to look like. Um, yeah, so this isn't probably going to finish anytime soon, but we'll see. So that is our look at making photoreal fuse characters. And if you've bought, if you watch the other tutorials, if you bought some humans from 3D Scan Store. It's a very similar process. Um, the same factors you're looking for are the reflectance on the skin, the normal maps, the displacement maps, and the bump maps. And like I said, if you want to go further in this, if pure reality, photoreal uncanny valley, two hour, three hour renders for a frame to get reality, that sort of thing, then keep going. Uh, I, I suggest that you look into understanding normal maps displacement maps and bump maps because that's where the other reality starts to come in like she doesn't have any bump map bump maps so she doesn't have pores in her skin uh then you want to look at subsurface scattering because if hair if you have light coming through like uh ears from the back they glow red because there's blood in them and vessels and skin stuff and when light goes through it light actually transmits through it so they kind of glow red same with your fingers go look at your fingers against a uh, bright sunny day they glow red that subsurface scattering, that's actually how, we gonna, how we're going to simulate diffusion moving on. Uh, it's very slow. It's pretty accurate. It's kind of cool because you can start to put a light through the bottom of a frame and the top, mix the colors. Does it very accurately? Very, very slow. Very painful. Not fun like just using the rigs I have right now. Um, those are the things you want to start to look for as you move forward. Also, ambient occlusion. Um, you can do ambient occlusion globally in the render settings, or you can do ambient occlusion locally on the skin as the diffuse channel, which is what I would do. On top of that, in Cinema 4D, there's something called the diffusion channel. The diffusion channel will start to break up um, the fact that the head is full shiny in all places. Where there's pores, where there's creases, it shouldn't be as shiny. Diffusion channel is going to help you do that. You can have it block normals. You can have it block reflections, you can have it uh, taint the color. So say you wanted to add dirt on top of her skin, that sort of thing, that's what that channel would let you do. Okay, so it looks like I'm running out of time on my camera. This might be running out of time as far as your patience in this process, but that is the look and that's what's gonna wrap it up for um, making more realistic human characters. I would give this a 50% out of 100% as far as realism. Of course, you can go so much further, but I would say that the cinem the fused characters that come in are at about 5% real. So we've we've jumped up quite a bit. Um, and if your interest, like I said, is to go to the 100%, then join the rest of the VFX industry because it's not easy. Um, but I think for us to be able to work with a character that's this nice, like, you know, I can already tell 
the reflections in her skin, the normal maps. This is beautiful. This is amazing. Uh, the hair is just about as much time as you want to put into it. You have to parent the hair to the head so that it stays with it. Uh, if you do animation, you could have it as a dynamic so that like when her head moves, the hair like does that and stuff like that. That's going to bog your system down. But if you want that reality, I'm showing you how to get it. Um, I would just bake that as a static hair object. Have it don't move. Just have it not move. You know, have it just be sitting there. At least it renders pretty realistically for um, a hair job. You could render uh, what a hair toss would look like or a hair stunt that they call it. If you put like the rod through her hair and went like this, where does the key that need to be to get the reflection? We can 1000% tell that right here. Um, you can tell hair reflections really well. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode. I'm going to try to let this render out for a little bit longer. I have a meeting to get to. Uh, and I will probably make it the thumbnail of this whole, um, of this episode to do the hair. Uh, so thanks for watching this. I hope that you're able to get your Fuse characters looking good like this. If you bought Cine Designer, you're in the community. Uh, hit me up on our secret channels um, that we have. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. And I kind of want to spend a little bit of time grooming uh, a guy's haircut. So like short side, like short hair. Maybe we'll do like a cool haircut. You know, like like if I shaved this, you know, like if I, if I you know, do different lengths, do like mustaches, do that. We can do a lot with the hair system. It's actually how you can make grass. Uh, carpets, all sorts of really cool stuff. So uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on the next episode. What are we going to do it on? Uh, maybe realistic, like realistic walls, honestly, is kind of hard. Realistic wood floors that have the reflections, right? That stuff's a lot more in depth than you would think. So maybe we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, I've got a lot of new, cool, fun things happening in Cine Designer on the business and development and very cool stuff. We'll talk about that then. I will see you later. I wish this rendered faster. But like I said, as you add quality, takes longer. I'll see you later, man. Bye.